Hello, everyone, and welcome to Find Freedom Through the Fire podcast. I am host Lori Jorgensen, and today I have a special guest. Um, she has a program called Body Revelation Wellness, and her name is Laura Stiverson, and she is a Desert Storm veteran and a cancer survivor who is now supporting her husband through his own cancer journey. And she has this uses this program, Body Revelation Wellness. And it is a biblical exercise and an all-around wellness program. And it is going, she's getting ready to launch. And so she has a Facebook group for everyone to come into and learn more about it. And we're going to talk more about that later. But right now, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren. And Lauren, tell us your journey and how you got into this program. Oh, thank you, Laurie. You're amazing. Love you. Um, my journey. Well... As, as you shared, I'm a Desert Storm veteran, so I, I've had some trauma in my life. You know, I do have what's called PTSD from being in the war. But besides the trauma of the war, I've also had other traumas in my life, such as cancer, twice now. And now my husband going through cancer, which is really difficult. But there's also been other traumas in my childhood, maybe not as big as this one but you know little things that were said to me that i've taken in the wrong way you know my brain just took it and you know besides that i've, I've also been in three car accidents so again more trauma in my life and when you experience trauma whether it's a big trauma or it's a small trauma you go through what's called that fight fight or fight, flight, or freeze stage. And what happens is sometimes your thoughts, they get stuck or those feelings get stuck. And when they're stuck in your body and you don't know how to release them in the right manner, it takes havoc on your body. thus causing you know, autoimmune issues, which I've had multiple situations with that, cancer. And so there's a lot to do with the mind that causes health issues, right? Mm -hmm. For years now, I have been on a journey for my health. Um, I was diagnosed with my first cancer back in 2009. And in 2014, 15, that's when I started working with supplements and started getting in a healthy state because I didn't want to do drugs or anything. I'm anti-drugs, right? And... So I went the natural way with supplements, which life-changing for me, absolutely. But then I started with, um, two years ago, I think it's two years ago when I found Revelation Wellness and I became a certified instructor through her. And then that's when I was also, when I started the program, I was also diagnosed with tongue cancer at that time. And it was just such a great program for me to go through because not only was it exercise, but it was biblical and it was big, big exercise, you know? So it's so hard to exercise sometimes to get started. But when you do and you're hearing the word of God while you're exercising, mm -hmm. it just brings up that hope, you know, that maybe you've been struggling with. And the Revelation Wellness, the Wellness Revelation, I guess it's the first course that I was, you know, trained with. Um, that's a nine-week course. That's more about diet and exercise, which is really not bad. I mean, I love it, you know. It's been, you know, wonderful for my health. And I'm working with my husband through that right now, getting him back into exercising. But the Body Revelation, this is like a brand new book that Elisa, who's the, the owner of the Wellness Revelation, she just came out with this one and this one really starts with the thoughts and taking you know those thoughts and those feelings that are stuck in our bodies and learning how to metabolize that pain through exercising and through um some programs that we go through experience you know ex um what do they call it? And I have a brain cramp on what it's called, but it, it's a process that will work it out. But she also does what's called be still, 
those are my favorite parts. Um, you could buy the book, obviously read the book and get to be still and the, and the walking, you know, things and do it all on your own. But there's something about being in a community with like-minded people struggling with some of the same things. My husband and I, as we were going through his journey, and it's like, you know, you have family, you have friends, you have church members who are praying for you or, you know, talking to you, but you still feel alone because they don't get it. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. but somebody who's struggling with their own health or their own thoughts, you know, they get it. Yeah. And I like to help the Christian woman entrepreneur because as a Christian woman entrepreneur myself, not only do I have I struggle with my health in the past, you know, and still do it, but I struggle with my business. And it's mm -hmm. again, the thoughts that and the trauma from failing, which also leads back to years earlier in my life. So it's just bringing it all circle for me. Yeah. But, and there's no such thing as failure. There's only lessons. Just remember that. that. That's true. <laughs> that's true. We go through things and everything that ha happens to us, you know, all the trauma, um, it all can work for good. You know, God can bring that to work for good. And that's what he's done with you with this program, you know, because you have so many people can relate to you. There's so much cancer nowadays. Um, I lost a sister to cancer. I've, you know, had several people in my life that had cancer and, and beat it. So, you know, we can all relate to that. And, and everything that we go through is for a reason. <laughs> it, it's God can turn it to good. And like you said, your mind, your thoughts um, and your body are so connected. And that's why mindset is so important. And I think that when we talked before, you had said that's kind of where you start in this program, correct, is with your mindset. For this one, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but we do also bring in, um, so what we do is also walking and um, just, and it's, so if you're somebody who is in exercising and loves exercising, you're, you're called to kind of slow down, right? Yeah. And if you're somebody who's never exercised, it's stepping it up a little bit, you know, but not mm -hmm. a lot, but just, you know, walking that out. And right now in Arizona, it's been <laughs> over 110 since Like beginning. Texas. <laughs> yes. Like it's, it's, um, I think the last few days of June up until now and up until Sunday, it's going to be still, it's been over 110. It's a record high this year, but twice a day, I still get out and walk. Good for you. Good for you. And you know, if somebody really can't handle the heat, you can go to the mall and walk. You can go, you know, some, some schools have tracks open. If you have a gym membership, they have a track. So there's ways to do it. Or I have an elliptical bike. <laughs> I mean, that's better than nothing, you know, if that's what you have to do. Um, but yeah, that, so what it does is it starts you out walking and then it builds up with the exercise. Yeah. Um, so there's exercises that we could do throughout the whole 13 weeks. You know, right. being in, or um, there's a Revelation Wellness TV and all those exercises are free. So oh, nice. You just sign up for the app and you can do those exercises. And mm -hmm. in there, it has actually a calendar. So it can even tell you what to do each day. Nice. So, well, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. And then it coincides with the book and the program. Absolutely. Yep. Right. That's awesome. And like you said, there's nothing like community and just accountability and going through things together. You know, we always are more motivated when we, we are in numbers, you know, and um, I think we can account for that in a, in a lot of things. Um, we're, we're both part of GPA and that's another community, um, you know, to go through things together and to work through things together and, and learn together. It, it's, it makes a complete difference than trying to do it on your own. And like you said, when you're going through you think you're the, you know, the only one sometimes going through things and just to have that confirmation that you're not. And, and even to learn from other people's experiences, um, 
is huge, you know, in your progress. So, you know, you were talking about how you have PTSD and everything from the war. So, um, what changes? I have, it, I have it from car accidents. I have it right, from, 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 from different um, trauma. Network marketing. Yeah, exactly. I've got all kinds of PTSD. Right. Our body does. I mean, our our body is affected by trauma big time. And like you said, to to heal that is really important. And it and it does start with mindset, but also, I mean, it, it affects your physical and your mental, everything, everything in your body. Oh, and, and it even, and I've got, um, I don't know if this is really a thing or not, but I'm going to say faith PTSD because through my healing process, I've had so many highs and lows, you know, where, as you see, I mean, you may not, uh, your your um, audience may not know, I have my thumb over my throat because I have a hole in my throat from when I had cancer in 2009. And originally I had a white, you know, trait thing that stuck out and I was told I would never get that out. I would always have that in. So nine years after it being in, a doctor gave me hope of getting it removed and opened up my airway. Wow. And, you know, it was something I had originally been praying and believing on. And then I was, I had three surgeries that originally at the very beginning or two surgeries at the beginning. And that's when I was told it would never happen. So when this doctor said he thought he could do it and I'm like, okay, God, you, you're answering my prayers, right? Even yeah. though I don't, surgery i'd rather you did it versus surgery and i i always every time i believe okay god's gonna do it. no but it didn't happen kind of like with my tumor it didn't go away it didn't happen right and it's like oh, it's gonna take me through it and so i went through three more surgeries for this mm -hmm. one to opened up and unfortunately my scar tissue just kept closing up so mm -hmm. On the last time, he thought it was working good. So that's when we took the trach out. And, but he wanted to wait a little bit longer before we closed up the hole. And thank God he did because my airway on the inside did close back up again. Oh. And then the other issue that started happening, and here I'm still believing, and I still do believe the Lord's going to heal me. Amen. I just, I just don't know when. Yeah. But it's like those hopes. And then I think I think it's because I put my own expectations on how it's gonna happen. Um <laughs> so I let myself feel you know, down and yes. but um right now I because of the surgeries and the radiation and everything that's happened in my throat, now I have issues with my lungs with breathing. And I also can't eat by mouth because everything went into my lungs and was causing me to aspirate and get severe pneumonia. And mm. so, so it's like, okay, Lord, what are you doing? I've been believing you for healing and it's just getting worse and worse. Right. I've also felt that the Lord was telling me years ago. And again, recently that i'm supposed to be praying and believing for people for healing right yeah and so i prayed for others to get well and they didn't get well the way i thought they would get well so i was disappointed <laughs> even though they were saved and they were not saved prior so they had the yeah. real healing right yes they did and they didn't go through pain with whatever they were going through. I mean, so there was healing there, just not the way I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And then about two weeks, one to two weeks before my husband was diagnosed with cancer, the Lord again was telling me that I'm supposed to teach and heal the sick and cast out demons. I'm like, okay, Lord, but I don't know how. <laughs> But I'll do it, but I don't, I don't know how. And then my husband gets diagnosed and just everything came crashing down. I mean, and all those reminders of, but Lord, you know, I tried saying prayers for all these other people or even myself and all these failings. And so that's when I kind of went on a journey of really trying to figure out what, you know, healing 
you know, the Bible says about healing and the supernatural. And I believe a lot, a lot of it is a mindset too. And But my mindset at this point, I've already battled so many disappointments. And so I, I say it's the PTSD because of those, you know, so I, I'm constantly learning. It's like, how do I, I realized it's my husband. When they, when it started, I was just thinking about the worst case scenario, the what ifs, you know, and I mean, lung cancer, that's a pretty big thing, right? And it's the size, the tumor's the size of a softball in its upper lung. And so thankfully he doesn't smoke anymore, but you know, had he, you know, he'd quit, you know, several years ago, but, um, you know, I didn't want him to go through chemo and radiation. Thankfully, he didn't have to go through radiation because radiation is one of those things that it's obviously has a lasting effect on the body. Right. But he, he did have to go through um, chemo and they have a new thing called immunotherapy. So he's doing, he was doing that. And that's actually a year long now. But I really don't want him to go through surgery. And, you know, we don't know. We'll find out on the 21st of August whether or not he will. Well, he'll have a test on the 21st of August. We'll find out on the 23rd whether he'll go through surgery or not. But we have learned in the process of these last several months of how to rest in the yeah. Lord. Mm -hmm. and because when we first started, the anxiety and the fear was so overwhelming. Yeah. And, and I just remember it was a little cooler back then in March, but at the end of March, and I just remember walking and just sitting down and just bawling. And I could still see myself there. And and then it's like, Lauren, you're wasting the day. If something happened to your husband, are you going to sit there and just think about all these things and be miserable? I mean, you all, you never know what tomorrow holds. Either one of you could die, right? Or any of us could. Yeah. So yeah. why waste today worrying right. about tomorrow? Right. I want to share something with you that I um, heard actually today. Um, it says, the verse says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. It doesn't say, so I sit in the valley of the shadow of death. We have to keep moving through it. And we don't know God's plan, like you said. And, and I think so many of us struggle with that. You know, we have an idea of what our idea of healing is and what our time frame is and what our idea of success and where we should be. But God knows, sees the bigger picture, you know, and the people that you are touching through your journey and your husband is touching through his journey. I mean, we, we know he's going in the right, you know, he's going to heaven regardless what the outcome but we don't know what that outcome is. God could just use his journey of healing to, you know, give other people hope. And, you know, he's already not had to go through radiation, which is an amazing, great thing. Um, and this amino therapy, who knows, you know, maybe that's going to be the answer. I, I love that they're using that, you know, they're trying more natural um, paths now than just filling your body, you know, with, the chemo and everything else. So, right. cause, cause our body has to be built up. It's the same as your program. You know, we're strengthening the body. We're not tearing it down. And I think that's so important. You know, when, when your body is struggling, we have to build it up. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we did come up, you know, when my first, my husband was first diagnosed, I was thinking about all the different things that we could do. I bought yeah. some tea, I bought some other medication stuff that I could give him to help, you know. But the Lord's like, Lauren, trust me. Right. And I, okay, so I, oh, I was even had him drinking oil that I bought this really expensive oil because oil is really good for you. Yeah. But, um, and he couldn't stand the taste of it because, you know, <laughs> he likes oil, right? But this is like a really, it's a bitter because it's a really good one. So now I just anoint his head with oil because the Lord's yep. like, Lord, if I heal him, you miraculously, are you going to take the credit because you did all these things, right? Mm, right. 
Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's... Then that's I remembered, true. I remembered, or I guess the Lord helped me remember, because, you know, he gives us those memories about um, Joseph Prince and his um, Holy Communion. And I had had his um, daily devotional book, and I forget the name of it, but I can share it with you. I can look it up. And it's in the in the chat or in our comments too. We will, you know, put yeah. the links for all of this stuff in there. Let me look at real quick. It, the name of the book. Oops, it's under Kindle. I'd show you, but I read it in Kindle, so. It's called oops, The Healing Power of a Holy Communion by mm -hmm. Joseph French. And it's a 90-day devotional about taking the Holy Communion. So every day, and actually my husband and I are on um, day 109 because we started over. So, yeah. so every day, you know, I'll do my walk in the mornings and I'll come home. I'll anoint, you know, say a prayer, anoint both of our heads with oil. And then I read um, this out loud for both of us. And then I have a video, it's of Joseph Prince, it's like a three minute video, and he brings us through the Holy Communion. So we'll do that. And then after that, we turn on the Be Still and Be Loved by Lisa Keaton, which is part of the body revelation. And she has like so many of those, you know, I think it's like starting on chapter four and there's like 26 chapters. So that tells you how many there are. Right. And That's something about being still, resting mm -hmm. your body, being in the presence of the Lord and just breathing yes. and that peace and that hope between all those things, you know, and it's all the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. and just coming to that part of being with the Lord, it's just, I can't lie. We have our moments of where fear will try to sneak in. Of course. You know, but majority of the days we are living in peace and joy. Majority That's of the day. Yeah. yeah. And, and like you said, it's all about being still and being in the presence of the Lord and trusting him. And I think, you know, when you were saying um, God was asking you, if you're going to take the credit, you know, if that's why I think we all kind of go through that, especially when we're um, coaches or in, in any kind of business. Sometimes, you know, this world is so about, in fact, I just did a post about this today. The world is so about um, public accolades and public recognition. And we have to, that's from the enemy. You know, we have to fight that and we have to be still and we have to let God do his thing. And that's really hard sometimes, especially for those of us that are independent or have had to be independent in our life um, and have strong personalities. That's that's a really tough thing to do sometimes. And I've had to learn that <laughs> a lot um, because I've always had to be the caretaker. You know, I've always the one that thought I had to fix everybody. And, you know, and I still love helping people, but I have to remember to give the glory to God because I'm not doing it. I'm just the vessel. And so I think, you know, like your program too, it's, it's bringing, and, and the communion thing, everything you're doing is bringing you back to the presence of the Lord. And that, that is key. You know, that is key. We have to, to let him be the one in control. We have to remember that he's the one in control. And it's not that we can't have feelings of. No, absolutely. Lord, but it's like, we don't hold on to those feelings or we don't yeah. bring you know, a lot of times when you have feelings, either for me, I've always been one to shove them down. Yeah. Other people will just blurt, you know, <laughs> anger or whatever. So that's yeah. how, but they're not expressed the right way. Exactly. And yeah. It's about knowing it's okay to have feelings, but to taking mm -hmm. those feelings and just placing them over and over again at the, at the feet of Jesus and exactly. just just knowing that, you know, he's there to wipe every tear away. Absolutely. Yeah. So. yeah, it's, it's. I mean, he gave us feelings. He gave us emotions. So, I mean, they're normal. But like you said, we have to not stay there. We have to give it to him. That's what he went to the cross for. We're, he nailed them all to the cross. So we've got to remember to give him that, you know, give it to him. Let him have it. He already, that's what he died for us for. 
And that's, that's hard, you know, to do sometimes. But um, like you said, the more we immerse ourselves in things that are, and that's why I'm a biblical lifestyle coach, the more we immerse ourselves in his principles, I mean, it's all there. And the more peace, oh my gosh, I can't even like, I know what you're talking about. The peace that comes over you um, by doing that is, you can't even describe that to somebody. <laughs> You can't unless you've gone through it. And exactly. my husband now understands when I talk about it, because he didn't know what that was when I talked about it years past. Right. And now he knows. He knows right. that being carried by the Lord, what that feels like, and that peace that surpasses all of that. You can't explain it. No. You know? <clears throat> so see, and, Lauren, there again, there's another example of how you didn't think that you were helping in the way that you had envisioned but look what you brought him to i mean that in itself is a, the best gift you could give him is to be able to live in peace and not anxiety and worry and stress as he's going through this because that's actually going to help his feeling because when we're stressed well, our body can't when, when he was first diagnosed i kept saying to the lord like lord i I can't do this. I'm not strong enough to do this physically or emotionally because for several years he's taken care of me. Well, I've had to, I love that the Lord did this because I had to stop letting him wait on me and I started waiting on him. And now I make him breakfast, which I never liked cooking. I love <laughs> serving him now. I yeah. love it. Yeah. And he's totally switched things around and it's given me the strength physically and emotionally to go through this, which I really, I thought there's no way I could do this, you know, at the beginning. Yeah. And so he's grown me through that. But the one thing <clears throat> prior to my husband getting cancer, excuse me. I was praying for my husband and my kids to grow closer to the Lord and yeah. myself. I always pray for myself too, but yeah. you know, um, I, I really wanted them to know the Lord. <clears throat> and my, every time I do stuff like that, something happens. And my husband's like, you gotta stop making these prayers. <laughs> I laugh. It's like, so then I thought it was my fault. You know, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I prayed oh. this and that happening. You know, yeah. The, the devil, he likes to do these things. Yes, stupid he does. <laughs> uh, it was a, it's a temporary thing, but, you know, still. But I did ask my husband the other day, I think it was at church, after church, I said, if you could describe in one word, what, what do you think you've grown because of all this? And he said, I've learned to lean on the Lord. Amen. So, Amen. And that's, well, that's a, a huge gift. Um, and that's what he wants, you know, that's what he wants from us. And like you said, sometimes he doesn't take us there the way that we want, would really yeah. like to go or the way that we think, you know, it's going to be, I know, the I important thing is you're there. Yeah. you know, the, that's the important thing is you're there and that's beautiful. So, okay. So what's your final thought and, um, and advice to someone going through, struggles maybe not you know exactly your struggles but going through struggles and in health and where that you know coincides i know we kind of touched on it a little bit but what what's your final thoughts on that you're not alone um sometimes you feel like you're alone but you're not you know jesus knows everything that you're going through every single thing and he's there to wipe every tear away there's no one else who will have the same experience as you and have the same thoughts as you only you will have those thoughts and feelings but jesus jesus knows and you know exactly so being, being in a community you know there's something just amazing about being in a community i believe the lord wants us in a community together to support each other you know yes yeah. So. Definitely. Definitely. I think that, um, you know, that's very evident <laughs> in the Bible that we are to, to work together 
and it, we're the church. We are the church. It's not about being in a building. It's about everything that we do. And so um, finding the right people, the right mindset, the right, um, you know, that are on the same page is, is very empowering. And it um, really helps you grow in your faith. And I, I want to bring up the, the radiant leadership, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, during that whole process, you have the women and, you know, you hear what the other women say and you may not be doing any talking, but you hear the other women and there's something that the Lord is telling you through that woman and Absolutely. what she's saying. And the 13 weeks of going through the body revelation in the group is very similar because you're in a group and then there's, you know, it's not just me talking, it's everybody, yeah. you know, the whole yeah. group of people talking about their experiences. Right. And so you just get to hear from each other. You know, matter of fact, I'm just a facilitator. So I just facilitate it. It's the Lord who leads it. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's so true. Um, Radiant Leadership Academy, for those of you who don't know, is in our GPA community. And it is a 16 week course that takes you. It's a biblical leadership course. And people think, oh, I'm not a leader, but we're all leaders. We all lead our families or we lead in some capacity in our life, just as, as a follower of Jesus. We're all disciples. We're all leaders. So, um, but it takes you through, oh my goodness, a bit, a journey <laughs> um, into yourself and into how you can become a, a leader. And um, like Lauren was saying, you know, when we think we're alone and when we share at the first part of that, like I'm sure you do in your community in, in the body revelations, when you hear other people's stories, um, God speaks to you through their story because there's so many of us that are going through the similar things and it might not be exactly the same, but very similar things. And um, just sharing our stories really speaks to us. Um, God speaks to us through that. And it's um, very healing. <laughs> um, it's kind of like layers of an onion. <laughs> I've been through it three times and I'm going to get certified to teach it um, this coming year. Um, the next time that it comes around. I couldn't make it to California for the final certification the first time. So I had to wait for the second round to get certified. But, um, and I think too, as you can attest, and as I can attest to being a coach as well, when you help other people, you learn <laughs> and you change so much too. Um, Absolutely. Sometimes almost more, <laughs> I think, you know. Um, yep. so yeah, it, it's amazing. So thank you so much to, for coming on today and talking about this and I will share more information. We're going to invite you to her Facebook group to learn more about this program. And she's going to launch, um, sometime later this month. Did you say you're planning? Um, I'm looking at around August 21st. It's probably okay. the day. Uh, I'm sorry. That's this is still August. July. <laughs> I was thinking it was already August. Let's not rush it, except for fall weather would be nice right now. But <laughs> so in August, she's looking to launch, but you can learn more about it in her group. And she has a daily videos that gives tips and encouragement. So we will leave those um, links in the comments of this video. And we'll also give links to the books that you can get and check out. And maybe the, um, did you say it was an app? The, for the exercises for well the that's part of when you when you buy the book okay so it's part of that yeah if you when you buy your book the value revelation book i'll send you that information but inside okay. the book it does tell you what websites to go to um for okay. those awesome. oh but the, but the revelation wellness though so that i'll give you that that one's free to sign up for for the exercises okay okay so we'll we'll draw a couple, couple things to give you yeah so awesome so we'll drop those links in um the comments of this video and again you can reach out to laura stuyvesen lauren stuyvesen it's on it's under that on facebook <laughs> so um we can actually link that too and you can message her if you have any direct questions okay thanks so much lauren i love you very much and i am praying you. for you guys and i just know god has big plans so we're just going to ride along for the journey and praise them all the way. <laughs> Absolutely.
All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>and receive his unconditional love and walk in the purpose that he has for you. Until next time.